How the Chuchki dog have made their mark on Chuchki society in the last 500 years. The Chuchki tribe was located between the Chuchki Sea, Bering Strait, and the Bering Sea, located on the Chuchki Peninsula. Within Chuchki society, two groups formed, reindeer herding people and coastal hunting people known as the Anquals. The Anquals used sled dogs for transportation, allowing for effective hunting and trade, as well as protection. The Chuchki dog is the ancestor to the Siberian Husky. They were bred over 7,000 years ago to help the Chuchki people survive. They were bred with very durable feet and relatively small, allowing them to run fast. A double coat allowed the dog to stay warm, acting like insulation. An inner fur kept the dog warm, while an outer hair keeps them dry. The dog was also bred for a very friendly and willing temperament. These dogs needed to get along with each other as well as humans, especially children, have a desire to pull, eat little food, and run endlessly. The dog also must take commands from its driver, yet also instinctively see danger and do what is right for itself and for its people. First, the Chutsky dog was used for transportation. Dog teams averaging 12 to 20 dogs pulled large sleds onto ice floes. With the strength of many and the ability to run fast because of their small size, the Chutsky dogs allowed hunters to individually hunt for a day, providing enough food for their family for weeks. The traditional method of dog sledding had dogs pull in what is known as a fan setup. This allowed dogs to be positioned in spread out areas so if a hole in the ice were run into, not all the dogs and sled would fall in. Dog sledding allowed hunters to get onto ice floes quickly and over harsh terrain which men alone could not. On the ice floes, the dogs were used to find the ice holes by smelling them out so a hunter could wait until an animal comes up to breathe. Teams of over 20 dogs pulled sleds with seal, walrus, and whale back to their village. Able to pull large amounts and travel quickly in harsh conditions, a family could have enough food for weeks, while without sled dogs, hunting would be in much smaller amounts and much closer to the village, limiting the success. Enquilt people had an abundance of food and furs, as dogs allowed for effective hunting. Easily able to transport their goods with dog teams, the Enquilt people could trade in their waters with foreigners. In the 1850s, the Enquilts traded furs, meats, and skins of seal, walrus, and whale for tobacco, tea, iron kettles, and sugar. The Chuchki dog allowed excess products to be efficiently brought to the shores where it could be traded, increasing the economy of the Enquilts. The Enquilts could then trade with other Chuchki, the reindeer herding Chuchki, again increasing their economy. It can be believed that the Chuchki dog did cause the death of some as they allowed for trade to occur, and alcohol, which killed many people in the tribe, was traded in abundance. While trade with some natives downfall, overall, the Chuchki dog allowed a society in harsh conditions to thrive. The Chuchki dog gave protection in many forms. It protected young children from the cold as the dog slept with children, providing warmth. Religious dogs protected the heavens and did not allow anyone who was abusive or cruel to a dog to enter heaven. One of the most important acts of protection of the Chuchki dog was allowing the Anquilts to run from the Russian army. The Russians wanted to conquer the native villages and traveled on reindeer to find and capture these villages. Dog sledding was much faster, allowing the Anquilts to outrun the Russian army. Better suited for the cold, the Anquilts survived, yet the Russians had to turn around as they were not prepared for such harsh conditions. By breeding a dog willing to run and pull endlessly, while being able to live on little food even in temperatures under negative 50 degrees Celsius, the Anquilts could outrun the Russians and survive their attempt to conquer. Eventually, years later, the Russians successfully conquered the Chuchki people. They did not believe their dogs were a special breed and necessary for the Chuchki's people's survival, so they created their own breeding program in Russia to make their own breed of dog. Leaders of the Chuchki people were taken by the Russians to keep power, and these leaders were the main breeders of the dogs. 
Without their breeding, other Chuchis bred their dogs. While their breeding was less refined, they were still able to sustain the breed while the Russians were trying to abolish it. By allowing the Chuchki people to hunt effectively, escape the reign of Russia, and transport large amounts of good for their own food and trade, the Chuchki dog allowed the Chuchki villages to survive. As seen in this video, made in 1949 by United World Films, dogs were used to increase the survival of their human. While these dogs are being used by Inuits in Alaska, they are being used for the same reasons as the two chi dogs were. The dog team takes out two people to go hunting. Across harsh conditions, the team travels quickly, finding their food, elk. After successfully killing an elk, it is placed in the sled and the dogs pull two people and the elk back to their village. Their ability to move quickly over the harsh ground, the dogs allowed two people to supply food for their family in an effective and efficient manner. Dogs have made an impact on the survival of people throughout history and have always been a companion as well as a working dog. This relationship has stayed, and it is why we still have dogs for pets today. The relationship of a sled dog has also stayed, as sled dogging is a sport of pleasure performed by many people throughout the world, including myself. <laughs>